this last lecture. Um, before I start, I, I do have to say, um, this is actually my last lecture ever as an HEC employee. So it's a little bit bittersweet for me, <laughs> but hope it goes well. <laughs> Anyways, what are we gonna be covering? Well, before actually we even did a VNV document, back when we were first, had our very first beta version of RAS with 2D, we were getting a lot of comments, well, how well does it compare against other 2D models? And in Europe, they had done what they called a benchmarking study, which is basically they compared uh, as many 2D models as, as they could against a, a set of data sets. So the, the purpose of what we're gonna see here is to demonstrate that RAS has modeling capabilities that can produce similar results to other two-dimensional models that were documented in this study by the United Kingdom Environmental Agency called their, their benchmarking report. Um, and it's also gonna show that because with RAD with subgrid, some of these data sets, I'm gonna show two different grid resolutions, okay? And the fact that we were able to get the same results with a higher grid resolution, but able to run it a lot faster, okay? So we'll show that. And then uh, also there's a test where I show convergence with different time steps also. So there's a report that I put together um, a long time ago. Uh, the latest version of it though, was updated for the 5.04 release and it's April, 2018. And you can get that on the RAS webpage. It's just called benchmarking of the HCRS two-dimensional hydraulic modeling capabilities. In this benchmarking study, there were eight tests and there a couple of them had an A and a B, okay? And RAS was able to do all the tests except for the very last one. The last one is a combined 2D surface water with rainfall and then a 1D subsurface, um, you know, sewer system type of surcharging system. And we don't quite have that yet uh, hooked up to 2D. That is something we're actually working on though. And uh, there is a district paying us to do that. So when that's done, we'll be able to, to fill out all the tests, but we did all the tests except for that very last one, uh, test A, B there, 8B, excuse me. So the first test was just very simple. Um, you have a, a terrain that goes slopes up and then back down and so forth. And you have a boundary condition to the left, which is a stage hydrograph, and it's gonna go from 9.75 to 10.35 meters, which is gonna be high enough to get over this hill. This hill is at 10.25 meters. So you're gonna increase the water level quickly, hold it at 10.35 and then bring it back down. And so you wanna see well, what happens to the water going up and then how much water goes over the hill and ends up in this right-hand side, okay? And so there's, um, there's two test point locations. There's point one we're gonna look at a hydrograph at, and point two, we're gonna look at a hydrograph app. So here at point one, on the left, I'm, I'm gonna show the RAS result always on the left, okay? And then the on the right is the other models. I couldn't get the numerical results of their models, I, so I, don't, I can only take the graphic out of the report. But what I try to do is size the graphic on the left for RAS to the exact same dimension, so it lined up correctly, so you can get the idea of the magnitude. So 10.35 is 10.35 straight across. So as you can see, there was some spread in the models. Now, some of these two models are very simplistic models, like this red dashed one here is called ISIS fast. It's not even really solving the shallow water equations or even the diffusion wave equations. It's, it's solving just a very simple uh, method of moving water from cell to cell. So it's not as accurate. And, um, but there are some models you've probably heard of, Mike Flood, Sobek, Tuflow, um, et cetera. There's, so there's quite a few that are, are popular models. Here's a test location two. So RAS is like right, right down the, the middle of the results of most of the models. The models I was most concerned about comparing against that I think are other good models are Mike Flood, Sobek, uh, and Tuflow. Okay, and there's a model called ISIS too, but that has been changed to a different name now. Here was benchmark two, and it's, I, I call this the egg carton test because it's basically a rectangular uh, terrain and it slopes from left to right and from top to bottom. So it's generally slopes this way, but there's these holes in the terrain or like egg carton locations. And so then the water is released at the upper left corner. And then you see, well, where, how far did the water go? Okay. And the inflow is this flow that goes from zero to 20 meters cubed per second and then back down. So on the left is the RAS result. And on the right is the kind of the, what they said, quote unquote, is what the expected result was supposed to be uh, what they felt was a good answer. And so you can see RAS has water in all the same egg carton holes <laughs> and about the same magnitude as, as the what they thought the final answer was. Here's just a couple of plots. So here's 
way down on the lower left. The And I ran RAS both full equation and diffusion wave because they were giving similar answers, not exactly the same, but similar. So even diffusion wave did quite well for this test. And then on the right are the uh, models in general. Again, I like to look at like the Mike Flood answer and the two flow answer, which is is right in here. And the RAS answer is right, right at about the same as those models. Again, some of these models like this red dashed one is very simplistic models and also this purple dashed one. So those aren't really good results. Um, th these are the better results and RAS compared quite well against those. Here's way down far away. Very little water got down to this location, but um, here's the RAS result. And again, much bigger spread in the results now of all the models because it's one of the farthest away points as far as how much water actually got here, okay, in the final final ending up location. But RAS is kind of in the middle of this pack compared to the other models. And then here's at the upper right, RAS, more, more convergence of the models, RAS did quite well there. And then, okay, so then moving on to the next test, we have kind of a plane that slopes down and then goes up and over a hill and back. And again, we're gonna look at point one and point two. And again, we have an inflow hydrograph that goes from zero, in this case, to I think um, about 65, 70 meters cube per second and then back down from the inflow boundary. So water moves from left to right. And we're gonna look at the two locations. And water's gonna slash back and forth. So once this water comes down and goes up over this hill, it's gonna kind of slash back and forth a little bit um, based on water going up this plane and then coming back down. So that's why there's gonna be some bouncing in the results and there should be, because that, that's physically correct. So here's the RAS result at, at location one. It comes up and went down and back up and kind of bounces around. And a lot of variability in the model results for this one because it's quite a, a dynamic problem actually because the hydrograph's rapidly rising and going up and over hills and so forth. Um, so again, RAS is kind of in the middle of this result, so to speak. And then here's at location two, um, RAS again in the middle of the results. This model ISIS-2 did not do very well compared to the other models. Um, in fact, it, it showed, I, I, quite frankly, I think too much water and the, the volume was, was off even. Um, on that one. This is uh, just uh, spreading out water over a horizontal plane. So there's a boundary condition on the left, right in the middle. There's a hydrograph that gets released over a dry plane. And then it's just to see, well, how fast does the water spread out? Uh, and then it's, then this plane is, is bound, there's no outlet, so then water starts to pile up. And there are several locations to look at, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we're even gonna look at a water service profile right through the center line here. So here's at location six, which was the farthest away of the points and off to the side. And most of the models were able to do this quite well with similar answers, because it's this is uh, a fairly simple problem just over a horizontal plane. And RAS had very similar results to, to all the models, okay. Then here's a profile right down the center line of that uh, points one, two, three, four, and five. And this is showing the the, the depth at a point in time after one hour of simulation. And you can see RAS got the water a little bit past 400, which is some of the other models, the same thing, a little bit past 400 meters out. And then the depth at the beginning and, and so forth. And then here's a velocity at that same instant in time. Okay, RAS is showing about 1.4 uh, uh, meters per second at the beginning and then going down to the, about the same as the other models at this point. Okay, here's um, test five, which is basically like a dam break simulation. So this is gonna start out dry. Down at the bottom left is the upper end, and we're gonna go down and go around a bend. And then this is gonna be a closed system and the water's gonna fill up at five. But a hydrograph goes from nothing to 3000 meters cubed per second, holds there for a little bit and then goes back down. So this is kind of like a dam break problem, but really quick, uh, just over a couple of minutes, um, um, this is gonna go from zero to the peak flow. And then we're gonna look at, not all of these locations, but we're gonna look at some of them. And I did run this in both diffusion wave and full equation. So the full equation is the dark blue and the diffusion wave is the light blue, um, just to see some of the differences. So for a dam break modeling difference, this isn't what I would call a huge difference. And compared to the spread of the other models, I would say the RAS diffusion wave and full equation were giving similar results to the other models. Now, I, obviously I think the full equation one's a better answer 
for something like a dam break because of the rapidly rising hydrograph and those acceleration terms are in there. But the diffusion wave in this case wasn't that much different. So this is location three. If we go back, here's location three, okay? Then there's, there's four and then there's five. Here's location five, okay? And again, giving about the same results in this location. Now, one of the other things I did with this data set is very on in a beta version of RAS, um, we actually had a bug. And the program, if you were using different smaller and smaller time steps, it wasn't converging as well as it should to a constant answer. And it turned out to be a bug. So it was actually good that someone found it and reported it. But this was the very first beta version for 5.0 way back when. So now here I'm running RAS. The original model was run with a five second time step, but I run it at 10 seconds, but also run it two and one. And on the left, you can see basically whether I run 10, five or two or one seconds, I'm getting the same answer, okay? Um, and then on the right is the velocity. There's a slight difference in, in, in timing of, of you know, a, a minute or so with between one second and 10 seconds, but um, that's about it. The magnitude and shape are basically the same. So here it's showing that, you know, if you get about the right time step, and if you, if you go to smaller and smaller time steps, it should converge and stop changing. And any good numerical model should do that. But in one of the first beta versions we had, it actually had a problem with that due to some um, interpolation we were doing uh, of velocity in between the middle of cells, and that was causing the, the, the problem. But we figured that out and fixed it pretty quickly. And then here's just looking at different grid resolutions. So here's 50 meters and 100 meters. I've also run this at 25, but it, it converges to an answer the same as the 50 meter one. And again, this is down at, at location five, the final location. So about the same answer, even for a 100 meter grid. The, the main problem was run at 50 meters, but I ran it at 100 meters also, just to show we could get basically about the same answers for both uh, timing, magnitude, and even velocity with a 100 meter grid instead of a 50 meter grid. And the difference though is that the 50 meter grid took 100 seconds to run and, and, and the, the 100 meter grid only took 24 seconds to run. Here's test six, which I showed this. This is an instantaneous dam break and I showed this um, during the detailed modeling. So this is that same data set that we looked at uh, yesterday. And this is one of the benchmark data sets. So uh, it's the same problem where we did that instantaneous release for the eight meters of water deep, okay. And here we go on the left, we got the, the RAS result and then the other models. And again, there's, there's quite a bit of variability of the models on this answer because an instantaneous dam break is one of the more difficult problems to model, okay? But RAS is like right in the middle of all this, okay, as far as that, and compares really well against like Mike Flood and Two Flow and Sobek and, and Isis. Here's at location G4. So let's go back for a second. So. There's various locations, G1, G2, G3, G4, G5, and then there's this G6, which is up in the pool, okay? So this was G2 location. This is G4, right in the middle of it. And then this is up in the pool, showing it, 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 it decreasing over time. And again, good result. Then here's some profiles. There's cross-section one and cross-section two, and the water surface at different points in time at these two cross-section locations. So here's that cross along cross-section one, or well, let's call it profile line one, the RAS result on the left, the other models on the right, okay? Uh, again, I'm, I'm concentrating more on kind of this answer right here from the other models, because that's more the models like Mike Flood and Two Flow and, and so forth. And here's cross-section one, max velocity. We're getting like a little over eight feet per second max velocity, about 8.2, which so we're right in here. Now here's test mark benchmark seven. And this is a combined 1D and 2D model, and it's actually a real river system in England. And so you got a 1D river, and then you got one floodplain called floodplain one on the on the right hand side. The water goes from the top to the bottom. So there's floodplain one, then there's floodplain two and floodplain three. And the floodplains were all done with 2D, and then they were connected because they're levied off. Some of them have culverts that allow flow to go in and out. Some of them just over top. And then floodplain three also has some structures. It has a structure down here and then it has a bridge structure up here that water has to go through. And then there were several evaluation points looking at the cross sections themselves in the 1D river, as well as evaluation points in each of the floodplains. And I'm just gonna show some of those. 
So these are for cross sections in the river, but they cross, cross section 35 and 45. And this is the RAS result on the left and the main result on the right. Not as many models could do combined 1D and 2D, so there's fewer models shown in this because not as many models have that capability. And then here's inside floodplain one. Here's the water surface with RAS and the water surface there. Really good comparison. Here's the velocity on the bottom and the velocity of the other models there. Here's floodplain two, location uh, eight and nine. So this is location eight, water surface. The other models, about the same answer, location nine. Some of the models had some instability. So if you see this red line here from ISIS, it went unstable once it started overtopping. So it had a trouble with stability on that. And here's floodplain three, location 14, and location 17. RAS did quite well on, on both of those. And then this is a final kind of like max velocity map. Um, so RAS is on the very left. And so here I have Sobek, Mike Flug, Two Flow, and ISIS. Those are the ones I did most of the comparing against. And very similar results, not exactly the same velocities, but very similar results in the river and in the floodplain. Um, so RAS is able to, if you see, RAS was able to map both the river and the floodplain simultaneously, where the other models don't show any mapping in the, in the river. Uh, I'm not sure why that is, but they didn't have the results there. And then this is the final depths at the end of the simulation. After the final simulation and water was able to go in and then out of these uh, two-dimensional flow areas, because there was a way for water to get out of most of them, except for floodplain two, it got trapped. Okay, so you can see floodplain one, how the water ended up. This is a plot of uh, final depths, and it goes from zero to three meters in depth. A little bit on computational time. So it shows each test here and then the number of cells, how long it took RAS to run, then Mike 21, Two Flow, ISIS, and Sobek. Um, an interesting thing, like down here, this test seven, the test said used a 20 meter grid. RAS took six minutes and 47 seconds, and Mike Flood was faster and Two Flow was faster. And so, uh, but uh, ISIS was longer and, and Sobek took 195 minutes. But I was able to run the same model with a 40 meter grid and get the same results. And it only took two minutes and 27 seconds. So because of the RAS subgrid capability, we can do things like that. And same thing with like test six, that instantaneous dam break. Um, I was able to use uh, one cell higher. So originally RAS took 37 seconds, which was already faster than the other models. But making the grid cell twice the size, I got the same answers, but only took 14 seconds. Same thing with test five. Okay, 24 seconds down to five seconds. Test four, 24 seconds down to six. This is all because I was able to use different grid resolutions in RAS and still get basically the same answers. And then the same thing with test eight. So here I was trying to show the power of the subgrid technology in RAS, allowing us to get away with larger grid cells, get basically the same answers, but run a lot faster in comparison to itself and other models. Okay. Well, I think to summarize, what is the point of these, the V and V document Alex talked about and the model comparison document I just showed? You're going to get asked, or at least we do, but you might get asked too, well, how well does the RAS 2D or RAS in general compare to other models? Or how well does it compare? Has it ever been validated? And you're going to be able to say, yeah, it has. There's a validation document and there's a model test document. So if a client asks you, hey, how, how much testing has gone into this RAS thing? Okay, is it really been tested thoroughly and is it validated? You have documents where tests have been run and that you can show and point them to say, here's the validation tests, here's the model comparison tests, okay? And you don't have to do all this on your own. And I think that's important for a tool like RAS and for the core of engineers. We need to be able to show that our tool that we use in the core that we've developed really can solve these problems from a verification validation standpoint as well as a model comparison standpoint. And that's the main purpose of these. So it's to introduce you to what was done so you can feel better about, hey, this thing really has been tested on lots of different data sets, and it does compare well against other 2D models. And then you have that information that if you need, you can share that with other people.